Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I'm happy to present the first iteration of my airplane pack, much awaited, and it will include a dozen planes including this 747 that is made to look like the shuttle carrier plane and so no wingtips that does have these um, shuttle carrier left additional vertical stabilizers as I call them. I don't know what they're officially called, that's what I call them. And of course NASA livery on the tail. And uh, normally the NASA livery would actually go on the rudder as well, but I wanted to make sure that we can make the rudder a procedural control surface so it's sort of squished into the main part of the vertical stabilizer. I probably need better wing textures on here, but for now it'll do. Uh, my goal with each of these planes was to make them about 5 megabytes, so that eventually we can have a lot of planes in a very small amount of space. So they're not of wonderful textures or models necessarily, they're just serviceable, they'll look all right outside. But if you get really up close and personal with them, uh, they're not going to look great. So that is the situation. The landing gear is either the stock landing gear or in this case adjustable landing gear. So we'll see how that works out for us. But yeah, the, in this case I have made the engines though. Actually, it'd be fine if you decide to use the engines that are modified by advanced jet engines, which are these uh, CF650Es, and they're basically exactly the same, uh, except, uh, you know, they look a little bit different. I decided to make these, but uh, the fan actually, I think, spins on these, so that's a nice thing. And if you have DCK, which is a mod that allows recoloring of stock parts, well, eventually once you get through all the other textures, the camo textures, you can get a decent looking one here. So yeah, uh, this might be recommended instead of using the ones that come with the mod, but I made them anyway. Uh, and we are going to test out because I have not tested out this 747 in a video yet, and there are flukes to it, if you will. But let's just go through the other planes that are included in the mod so that you know what they are. And the other, uh, well, one other big one is, of course, the AN-225. It is rather a lot bigger than the 747, isn't it? Um, here I am using uh, the stock modified stock model ones, and but these are Progress D-18Ts. They're not the same as the ones on the 747, of course. Um, and in this case, for reasons I don't understand, it doesn't have a DCK uh, modification to it, while those do, so I can't recolor it. But even though it's the same model, it's weird. Um, stock landing gear. And again, if you get really close, you can see iffiness on the textures. But, you know, just keep it a decent amount away. We've got a dummy payload on top. Um, as with all of them, there are going to be some control surfaces that you're going to have to add. In this case, all the flaps, ailerons, uh, rudders, and also the horizontal... Uh, sorry, the elevons. Uh, the elevons that are, are on the horizontal stabilizer. It's a little bit hard because the parts, the wing parts are all not symmetrized because they are different. Because if you try to put them on in symmetry, they are different up and down, right? They have a sort of curve to them. They're not symmetrical in that axis, so you can't just use mirror symmetry necessarily. Uh, so anyway, in order to find these things, just Type 747 for the 747 parts, and hopefully it'll be all self-explanatory, and there are nodes in the appropriate places. And AN 225. Um, the uh, though I don't know why there's that ramp there, but otherwise the body, the horizontal stabilizers, vertical stabilizers, and so forth. And where necessary, some of the parts may not have fair mirror space. It depends, but yeah. Uh, sometimes if they're, they don't have a symmetrical partner, they might not have firm aerospace on those parts, but generally the wing parts do. So that's the AN-225. The B-58, uh, not recently flown, but I do know it works. And here we need the elevons and the rudder, but otherwise, and the landing gear, but otherwise, oh yes, and the engines, the J-79s in this case. So four J-79s. On those pods, the pods have the air intakes built in. And the F-100, air intake built into the nose. And for this, the engine necessary is the J-57. And then need the rudder and the wing surfaces, but not the horizontal stabilizers. Those are all moving and included. 
the F-101. And this one has two of the J-57s. Uh, rudder uh, is necessary and also needs the wing surfaces and the landing gear. But otherwise, that's there. Might want to make the cockpit a little bit shinier. The F-102 is one that I have not successfully gotten off of the runway, and I have no idea why. <laughs> Uh, I have not, I've tried removing FAR from stuff, I've tried various things, shifting the center mass and center lift around and all that business. Nothing seems to work, it's a weird thing. Uh, it has a J57, that's the engine that we'll need. And of course air intakes are built into the body, but yeah. No idea, no idea why it seems to not work. F-104 is troublesome because of its tiny wing, but it is here. This needs a J-79, the rudder and wing surfaces and landing gear. And otherwise the horizontal stabilizer is provided. Max does not come with this pack. It's a special thing and it's huge too. So anyway, that you can just look for my Max video on the YouTube and it should have a link for it there. Uh, this is the Saab Draken, and so it needs the wing surfaces, rudder, and the Avon RB146. You might need um, AJE Extended for this one. Let me see if that's the case. Change name tag. No, it just says AJE, so maybe it comes with advanced jet engines by default, and of course the landing gear as well. So that's the Saab Draken. The SR71. Uh, what it comes with is the landing gear and now what it doesn't come with is the landing gear it doesn't come with the all moving uh, vertical stabilizers I hadn't done those so just use the B9 procedural wings for those and of course the wing surfaces and the engines the Pratt & Whitney J58 is what you want there so otherwise what it comes with is the body the Two parts of the wings are separate, so the left inner wing, left outer wing, the left engine pod, and the same for the right, so a total of seven parts there. Now for all the right parts, you're going to have to flip them, because FAR doesn't under understand it otherwise. In other words, uh, FAR only actually understands the aerodynamics of stuff on this side, and so you have to always flip it around for the right hand side. It's weird. But yep, that's the situation. So all the right hand parts that are far capable have to be flipped. The SR-72, the scramjet. As you can see, basically the same size as the SR-71 as indicated by Lockheed it would be. And it does have the all moving vertical stabilizers because this is more made more recently. And otherwise, it also has the engines coming with it because it needed the special scramjet stuff. So all it really needs add to it are B9 procedural control surfaces on the wing, or body, and the landing gear. So then it's ready to go. The Super Guppy. The Super Guppy, once you put it together, will need the landing gear. The right R. 3350 cyclones or you could put the turboprops equivalent turboprops if you can find them but uh, these are the ones I put on during testing and of course it needs flaps ailerons um, the elevator and the rudder so otherwise the actual vertical stabilizer is included horizontal stabilizer and wing pieces and also the engine nacelles the, these engine pods, there's just one engine pod that's duplicated for all of them. It's a very generic engine pod, it doesn't look exactly like the Super Guppies. And then finally, this X-40 is not included. This this XB-70, the Valkyrie. So those are the dozen planes. And again, all of them, the parts should show up if you just type in their name. And so the XB-70, these seven parts. And yep. Yeah, Technically, it probably shouldn't have the NASA and number on the inside of those vertical stabilizers, but I'm not going to fix that right now. Uh, this, of course, will need the wing control surfaces, the rudder. It does come with the canards, though, so those are available. 
and of course it does have the wing tip going up and down it will need the gear like all of them I made no landing gear all right so that's just a run through of what the mod includes and if you need to delete some planes you don't like them I mean they're all very small so uh, you're not gonna save a whole lot of space by deleting them but if you do need to delete them then you can just delete the ones that have their name they don't share any files they're all independent so go into the planes folder and then delete the ones that are the ones that you do not want and it should be fine okay so the 747 without further ado okay the landing gear is right on the edge where it ought to be now watch out the plane does like to sort of tip onto its tail when the engines fire I think that's due to the engine placement but the pushing the nose down is helpful I've got the flaps configured so we'll have a little bit of flaps for takeoff and we'll see whether that helps anything or not a lot of atmospheric autopilot I used the turbofan configuration from real plumes and this is what it looks like and it doesn't make much of a sound don't ask me uh, that's just how it is so so I recommend pushing down on the stick initially and when releasing the brakes it still tends to want to do that maybe throttling up smoothly would be better but yeah why it doesn't have sound I have no idea if I put the turbojet plume it'll make a sound but it'll look weird with long flames and everything we're not at the maximum takeoff weight we're shy of the maximum takeoff weight of this by about 50 tons but we're carrying a full fuel load now we're way above its normal takeoff speed um, it, after we go up, it likes to dip down for some reason. I don't understand exactly why. But, yeah, uh, after about 120 meters per second, it's okay. The landing gear problem I had with the Valkyrie doesn't happen with this one, even though we're using the advanced, uh, adjustable landing gear. So, uh, we can probably pull up the flaps. So yeah, I don't know what the landing gear issue is. It's a little bit weird without any sound though. This, uh, the 747 was actually the first plane I modeled and it was based on a tutorial from Blender Guru. So on YouTube, there's a channel called Blender Guru and I just went with what he said initially and it was sort of a mess. <laughs> and so I've had to touch it up a bit, but I only touched it up. I didn't start from scratch, so it's still, a bit of a mess. Um, it's basically the first one that I made so uh, forgive me it's not great but at least it's low poly and small. The small is essential because I do want eventually to make a lot of planes for Kerbal Space Program and therefore need to make sure they are not big and also these are probably going to be used for a uh, sort of a shoot 'em up game I guess the 747 you'll be protecting it or something like that but the point is that that game also I do not want to have be very big and so I've sort of set this arbitrary 5 megabyte limit for each plane which is a far cry from planes in simulators generally these days so yep but of course we don't have to worry about the cockpits in this case and at least for the purposes of Kerbal Space Program, I'm relying on the landing gear here. The shoot 'em up game that I was thinking of would not have you landing. It's just an arcadey thing. So there would be no takeoff and landing in that case. Okay, well, anyway, I decided to keep it level here and we are accelerating. We have a reasonable stage time considering it is a fuel, full fuel load, 11 hours. Seems about right. Probably longer if we go up. Seems to be increasing as we increase speed as well. 
So it is the General Electric CF6s that these are configured as. And I just copied what Advanced Jet Engines had on that. Except I increased the maximum Mach number because the maximum Mach for the 747 was actually Mach 0.92. Though I don't think that was uh, part of the Advanced Jet Engine portion of it. That was actually a part of the stock portion of it that limit. Now whether this can carry a space shuttle is a whole other business. Probably would want to decrease the fuel load in that case. I didn't really tweak the empty mass a whole lot. We might need to bring that up a bit. Well. I guess eventually we'll see whether I can land this thing. Like so many other planes, it dumps speed like crazy. And not realistically. But then, if it's thinking that the engines go all the way down to zero thrust, real, real life engines don't go all the way down either. So maybe that's part of the problem. But our takeoff speed was definitely higher than normal, as with all the planes so far. There is that too. View from inside. Well, we have shuttle windows because <laughs> it's still using, still using the Mark III cockpit, and it's all the Mark III cockpit stuff. Okay. Well, at this speed, it doesn't even want to pull up much. Oh, uh, that's the the last bit of flaps really causes too much drag. Uh oh, it's like air brakes. Let's not go to that level of flaps. Actually, that was dangerous. Well, this is way fast, but it feels like the safe speed right now. We'll try and figure something out eventually. There is far on the wings and the horizontal stabilizers, so there's a limit to what I can do with it. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, it's it's going slowing down too fast. Uh, Okay, but we stayed on the runway with immense rudder. But yeah, that's where it could spin out because it decelerates way too fast. Okay, well, brakes. Well, we landed safely, really. <laughs> It's still a bit dodgy. They're all a bit dodgy. But that's what you're getting. What can I say? Alright, so I've done what I can in order to make them usable, except for the F-102. But ultimately, it is an imperfect flight simulator, Kerbal Space Program is. It was never really meant for that. And it's, it's better off past Mach 1. It's not great when it comes to slower speeds and getting off the runway. But that is where we're at. So I will put a link in the video description with the mod. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.